everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. If you're new here, you might not know that every single Sunday I go ahead and upload a new game or activity that you can take and use in your classroom right away. Hence, Susan's Sunday Spotlight. This week I have a no prep or low prep game for you. I actually have two of them. I'm going to share two different dice games and teach you how to play. These games are great for first and second grade and all you need for both of them are some dice. So let's go. The first dice game up is called Going to Boston and I actually did a little research about this one. I played this game when I was younger. It's a very simple fast paced edition game and I didn't know why it was called Going to Boston. So when I looked up the history it actually says on the ship the USS Constitution. They used to play this game to kind of pass the time on their way to Boston. I have no idea if that's true or not but that's what it said. So you'll see on the little recording sheet that there's a little ship up there so you can give your students a little bit of that information if you'd like to. As a side note, all of the recording sheets I'm going to show in this video will be available for you down in the description below. You can click them down there, but they don't have the instructions on how to play. So make sure you watch the video first so you know how to play and then go ahead and print out the printables that you'll need. If you're watching me on mobile, hello, make sure you click that little down arrow. It's next to my title and that will expand the description. I get a lot of questions about that each week. So back to the game. For going to Boston, all you're going to need are three dice. One, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and insert a little video on how to play. So let's take a look. So player one will go ahead and roll all three die. They will keep the highest one and then they roll the other two. Again, keep the highest one and do that last roll. They're trying to get the highest sum, so every time they roll those dice, they are looking for the highest number. So four plus four plus five equals 13. Player two rolls, they have a six, they'll keep that. Then they'll keep the five and roll the last one, which is a three. So six plus five plus three equals 14. 14 is higher than 13, so player two won the first round, and then they go ahead and pass the dice back. Now, as they keep playing back and forth, if a player happens to roll two sixes on one turn, they still only get to keep one of them. So each time they roll those dice, they are keeping the highest number, and then rolling again until all three rolls are complete. Then they will add it all together and compare the sums. At the end of the game, whoever won the most rounds is the winner. I like this game because it is really fast paced and students are actually practicing quick number sense as they first roll the die and have to determine which number is bigger and which one they should keep. And then of course they are practicing addition over and over and over. So it is a great game for your students to practice all sorts of math skills and it's pretty easy to ramp up just by adding a fourth dice in there. Even when you add four dice though, students only get to keep one die per roll. The next game is called Pig, and again it is a partner game, but this time students each only need one die. I'll go ahead and insert another video clip here of how to play Pig, but this game is fun because there's some strategy involved. Students essentially they get to keep rolling and rolling until they either decide to stop and pass the die, or if they get a one and then all those points that they rolled up are completely taken away. The goal of this game is to be the first player to reach 100. Okay, so for this game, you only need one die per player. So player one will go ahead. Two, they roll again, plus five is seven, plus six is 13. They rolled three times in a row. They're going to go ahead and keep that 13. That's a good number because if they rolled a one, they would not be able to write any tally marks. They would lose all those points. So now player two's turn. Three, roll again, plus two. Let me try one more time. Oh no, a one. So they actually don't get any points. Player one's turn. Five. They thought, well, I'm just going to go ahead and keep my five. I'm way ahead right now and let player two try. Three plus two is five again. Okay, I'm going to keep them. So the strategy there is I don't want to keep rolling in case I get a one. So four, player one goes, draws four tally marks. Player two gets to go again. So the game goes back and forth as players take turns, and it's fun because each player is totally in charge of their own turn. They get to decide when to stop rolling and when to stop adding those numbers, unless of course they risk it and they go ahead and get that one, and then they don't get any points during that round. So the goal of the game is to be the first to get to 100. 
doing the mental math and the tally marks can be a little tricky for some of your students. So playing the game the same exact way, I just have a different game board for students, and that's this one with the 100 chart. So player one rolled a five and a three, oh, but then a one, so they don't get any points. Player two rolled a three, plus two is five, plus two more is seven, they're gonna stop there, and here they will go ahead and color their squares in. So they'll be able to see exactly where they are. This is easier to visualize for those students that might need it. Player one rolled a six and then a three, so they're at nine, and they will go ahead and color theirs in and let player two go. The same rules apply where you are in charge of your roles. Of course, if you get that one, you don't get any points during that time. There's a lot of ones being rolled here, but this is just another way to play the game so students can keep up and see who is first to 100. As you can see in the video, I went ahead and shared two different ways that you can play this game, or at least record the game, it's still played the same way. But some of your younger students might need that visual cue with the 100s chart. That way they can keep track of what number they're on instead of mentally adding each time. For your second grade students or later in the year in first grade, that mental addition and using the tally marks is a great way for them to practice addition and then grouping and counting to 100 by skip counting as well. And that is how you play Going to Boston and Pig. I hope you enjoyed these fun dice games. If you did, please go ahead and leave me a comment down below and click that like button. And make sure you're subscribed if you want to see any of my new videos. Like I said, every single Sunday, my goal is to bring you a new fun game and activity that you can use in your classroom. If you'd like to get that, make sure you hit subscribe, like I said, and click that bell. That way you're notified every week of my new game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.